in the Bat Cave Studios in Auckland, and with me tonight is Dave Vanian and Rex Gabies from The Damned. How do you do? That's me. You're supposed to say good day. I'm sorry. Good day. <laughs> I'd imagine, like, with all the ups and downs the Damned have had over the years, you might sort of be feeling a bit cynical about the music business. No, we ain't. What makes you say that? No, not at all. Not at all. Just a wild guess, really. Nah. You know? Like, The Damned announced a farewell gig at the Rainbow in 78, <laughs> and you broke up. What, what brought the... Brought you back together again. Sheer stupidity. No, it was me and um, me and Captain decided that we were going to work together, and we wrote a few songs and that. And then it was, it came a time to look for a singer, and we both just—I mean, it's his own fault. Mm. It was just sort of like, well, there's only one man who we sort of really liked to work to with, and that was him. So we told him a lot of lies, and <laughs> he, he, like the fool he is, he believed us and came along. <laughs> he hasn't been able to get out of it since. Right. Yeah, you had your own band for a while, Rat. Was it sort of not working out or what? No, it was rubbish, really. It was just... I Really, that was so I could sort of learn they, how to write songs. And they things. were interesting, except when I saw them, he spent more time up front than the lead singer. Was this the Doomed? Know? It wasn't the Doomed, was no, it? No, that was the yeah. White Cats. The White Cats. Yeah. The, White Cats. Yeah. the Doomed cool, was like, huh? when you reformed, you called yourself the Doomed for a while. Yeah, well, that's because we weren't. We didn't really reform properly then, and we were just doing a few gigs to try it out, so we thought we'd It was to see whether there was any public interest in the Damned. Yeah. Really. And there was. And there was. And here we are today. In New Zealand. So it seems. Well, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> hey, what do you think of the current sort of crop of, of punk bands like Jesus and the Mary Chain or, or Zeke, was it Zeke, Zeke, Zeke Sputnik? Zeke Sputnik. Yeah, what do you think I of those? I certainly don't put Zeke, Zeke Sputnik in the same category as Jesus and Poxy Mary Chain. Because <laughs> I think they're a load of cheap sensationalist rubbish. And I think Zeke, Zeke Sputnik, however, are, at least they've got some sort of balls. Yeah. And some spirit and a bit of that old... Getting up everybody's nose. They make it a little bit more colourful, that's for sure. They've livened things up a bit. You don't think they're encouraging violence or something? No, nah, of course they're not. Well, that lot, you've got to be joking. I mean, but, yeah, but then all their violent, you know, all that sort of thing that they do on that is, is taken from sort of the old very commercial films movies that stuff, actually, yeah. you know, like Terminator. Like Orange, yeah. yeah it's, and they are actually big movies, so I don't think you can blame them for using that as a source of entertainment. Yeah. If you became like really mega huge and you could afford to stop playing live, do you think you would? Not if we enjoyed it. I mean, you know, I mean, any band can stop playing live and just put out albums and be successful. I think with video nowadays, a lot of bands can't play you know, live. But a lot of bands can't. Or yeah, can't play live. We enjoy it. Yeah. Still. You know. Do you think the audience has changed, or is it the same people that came and saw the band when you first began? They're yeah. looking a lot younger if they do. If they are, yeah, right. Complete mixture, really. Audiences are c complete different range of people. Yeah. From you know people who saw us years ago to uh, new people, and uh, we're dragging in sort of archaeologists and you know, sort of professors and God knows what else. It's really funny because you get sort of like a lot of sort of fourteen-year-old sort of girlies down the front, and then behind them you get the old sort of punk rockers, and then up the back you get the sort of the the old originals, the old school of 76, who've now got beer guts and beards. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a bit odd. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's take a look now at Is It A Dream from... Uh, Why? From, uh, was it? Fantasma... Phantasmagoria. Fan Phantasma what? Phantasma what, yeah. Well, anyway, Is It A Dream? <laughs> it's a big it's word. It's a wheelbarrow it's word, a isn't wheelbarrow it? It's a wheelbarrow word, yes. <laughs> you took the advanced uh, presenter's course then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We recorded Phantasmagoria at uh, Pete Townsend's Eel Pie Studios. That's Did right. you happen to meet him while you were there? Yeah, it was terrible because it's Roman Jug who's got an even bigger nose than I have, and Pete Townsend and me all in the same room at once. There was a no one's getting the air. Severe you know, oxygen noses. shortage at the time. <laughs> no, it was all right. He was a good lad, old Pete. Yeah, all right, so. good lad. Oh, before Pete comes on, we've got his mate Roger. Dodgy Roger. Dodgy Roger. Dodgy Roger. Roger. Give that man an Oscar. Yeah. But he's doing a song written by Pete. It's called After the Fire. And that's followed by Give Blood, which is Pete Townsend's new single. You know, I think Pete Townsend's still got it. Yeah, he's still has. What, the big nose? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, have you ever heard of a band called Clannard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they're Irish. They did, Irish they, um, band, they did yeah. the theme music to Robin Hood, didn't they? Yeah, and, and um, Harry's Game. Have you heard of Harry's yeah, Game? Harry's the TV game, yeah. show. That's yeah. a fantastic piece of music. Them as well. yeah. yeah. Well, what we've got now is In a Lifetime, which is their new single, and it's got Bono Vox on vocals. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Genau. Okay. 